in 2018, we had an inspiring pilgrimage to the Holy Land. And it was wonderful to follow, to walk in the footsteps of Christ. We visited Bethlehem and Nazareth and Jerusalem. We stayed at the Mount of Beatitudes. We paddled in the Sea of Galilee. We swam, or rather floated, in the Dead Sea. We visited Jericho. We looked into Jacob's well. And we stood in the place in Cana where Jesus changed the water into wine. And we even knelt and prayed at the place where he was crucified. And everywhere we went, we took our the gospel with us and we read the appropriate passage and so that's made us such a profound experience to journey through the Holy Land like that. Now today the desert where Christ spent 40 days before starting his public life comes vividly into my mind's eyes as I think back to that time. We were driving in our bus to the River Jordan to the a probable place where Jesus was baptized. We were on a good road and on an air-conditioned bus with plenty of water in the bus, but on the road we were surrounded by the desert. And from the comfort of the bus, I was able to look out and just see this desolation. And I was able to imagine what it might have been like when the temperature drops to freezing overnight. It was boiling hot at the time. And the desolation of such harsh conditions. And it's totally arid. You don't see anything out there. So I came to realize the significance of the desert. And I think the desert is almost like a purgatory we must pass through in order to reach paradise. The, the desert in Israel that I saw, it just, was just so arid. There was no vegetation, there was no bird life, and if you had to look closely, you wouldn't see any animals. It was really desolate. The gospel described Jesus being with some wild animals, so you can imagine them roaming around, just trying to survive in that bleak landscape. But in that landscape, Nothing comes between a person and his God. One either discovers God or succumbs to despair. And the little life that thrives there is the inner life. The Spirit drove Jesus out in the desert and he remained there for 40 days. The Gospel describes it in just two very concise sentences. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. That's it. In Mark's Gospel, that's all it says about what Jesus experienced there. Now, as we enter this Lent, 2021, we, we may feel our own resolve to change might be a little bit wishy-washy. We've tried so many things before and failed. Possibly we're thinking as well. The whole year, 2020, right up to now, has been like one long Lent in lockdown. So we ask ourselves today, how do we make this Lent a fresh experience? How do we gather the spiritual desire and energy to change? How will we even know the areas in us where change is necessary? Now, just earlier in the Gospel, John the Baptizer had announced, After me will come one more powerful than I. And then he went on to say, He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And there is the source of our renewal. There is the one who can fill us with a desire to change and to make that change possible. Jesus will baptize us anew with his spirit this Lent to make our tired spirits new again. And so Lent is truly a season of hope in which we discover that what is impossible for us is possible for God. 
when the Hebrew peoples came out of Egypt and they traveled in the desert, they gave in to temptation. And as a result, they spent 40 years traveling in the desert before they were able to go into the promised land. When Jesus spends 40 days in the desert, he's tempted as well, but he does not give in. Just think of the wild beasts that would have been with, Je with Jesus in the desert. So for us, um, that's really a scary place to be. But we see here in Jesus, God reconciling humans and nature. And the desert loses its hostile qualities. With Jesus, there is a peaceable kingdom. The Messiah has reconciled humans and the wild beasts. And so Lent provides this opportunity to confront the wild beasts of our lives. We can think here of the aggression, the competition, the prejudices, maybe the insatiable desires that have control over us and our nation. They are the wild beasts, looking almost untamable. But they do not have to have dominion over us because we have been baptized into Jesus, the powerful one, Jesus who overcomes the tests in the desert, Jesus who makes peace between opposing forces. We are also told that in this place of testing and hostile forces, there were ministering angels. We pass through many periods of testing in our lives, times when our very identity as Christians is seriously challenged. Powerful but subtle forces pull, us, pull, pull at us and we can feel almost alone or solitary in our struggle against them. But there are angels ministering to us in the deserts of our lives. When an addiction seems impossible to break, we find help in a group. That's, that's an angel ministering to us. When we're distraught over the death of a loved one and others are able to share their stories and compassion and give us courage, that's an angel ministering to us. When we are laid up in bed with a broken leg or a bad back or something like that and friends come it's social distancing at this time, but friends come and drop off food at our front door and bring compassion. That's an angel ministering to us. When our faith is dry and we pray, wondering why we bother, but the prayer and faith of all of us, our community, when we are gathered, that gives us hope. When we want to be a peacemaker, or live a simpler life, or choose a path of service, and we hear nothing but the voice of people saying, no, no, no. Then the lives of the saints, the stories of contemporary Christians, they are our angels in the wilderness, ministering to us, enabling us to be faithful to the core we hear and are trying to live out. Then, there are, of course, other angels, may not as tangible as these examples I've given, but nevertheless, they comfort us in the desert, like our ideals and our dreams. They can be our angels if we stay with them. They lift us up and sustain us through difficult and testing times. And so today we're thinking about deserts, what they are for us. In the desert of the Jews, as they faced temptations and even betrayed God, we remember how God stayed with them and led them out. That powerful story in Genesis reminds us that when we see the sign, the rainbow in the sky, we are assured that God is faithful to the covenant God made with all living beings. And God makes sure that we do not have to pass through our deserts alone because God sustains us in a variety of angelic ways.